hello, welcome to this video about the Ictra Senna from, as you might be able to hear, a rather wet Guatemalan afternoon here in April of 2020 on the day 13 in March. So, we've got the Ictra Senna coming in and the Ictra Senna well, what do we know about Ik? Ik is the wind. Ik is the breath of life. And Ik, sometimes we see Ik as a very good day for cleansing. It's a good day for purifying. A particular good day for purifying the air. Now, in one way I don't really want to dwell on the situation that the world is in right now, but in another way, I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious that maybe it's got to be talked about as well. Ik, as a Nawal, is considered to be very strong. Ik can be rather turbulent. It can represent inspiration. It can represent the breath of life. It can represent bringing something new, bringing something clear, bringing something clean. But it can also represent the, the hurricane that passes through and turns everything on its head. And so I think this is kind of like also rather pertinent to our times right now. Now, of course, what we're all looking for is some relief, right? We're all looking for something which is going to say, hey, you know what? These next two weeks, everything's going to be great. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily going to be the case according to this Tresena. So if that's too negative, like, um, please stop watching now. I don't think it's going to be that negative, but you know what I mean. We're going to be kind of realistic about things. And when Ik is involved, we don't know what's going to happen. Ik is unpredictable. Ik is extremely changeable. It changes from one minute to the next, just the same as the wind can change in a snap. And what we have to learn to do is adapt. Because if we try to be too strong, if we try to be too determined, if we try to be too um, like set in our ways, the wind will snap us. The changes come along and they break us. And we get angry. And we get upset because the change is inevitable the change is going to happen whether we like it or not because we can't fight the wind and so what we have to learn to do is adapt we have to use what we've learned we have to use kind of like what we know in order to adapt to the changing conditions we have to there's, there's been some things going around about sailing lately it's kind of like you set your sail in the right way so that you can use the wind, so that you can adapt to those changes, and so that you can bring them in and make use of them. So, one eek brings a new communication, brings a new breath, brings a new idea perhaps, brings new communication. One eek brings new changes. The day one eek is said to be a great day for a spring clean. It's the right time of year right now, I guess. Well, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere anyway. One eek is a great day to be cleaning our altars, to be cleaning our sacred spaces. It's like the breath, the new breath, the new breath of life comes through. Brings new air, brings new oxygen, brings new ideas being communicated on the wind, being communicated through the breath. These are ways that we can see one eek bringing useful. One eek gives us this opportunity. It's literally, we could describe it as a breath of fresh air coming in, renewal, a new breath that we take, new life breath that we inhale. But every breath is change. Every breath brings something different. And so this is the uncertainty that also comes with eek. It's like, what's it going to bring? We don't know just yet. What's each breath going to bring? We don't know just yet. And sometimes it can bring chaos as well. And I mean, we're kind of like pretty much in the middle of chaos right now. So this is why I say the theme of this next 13 day period may be kind of like a more of the same, maybe a little bit more turmoil. So moving from one ik, we're going into two akabal. So, to Akabal. Akabal 
has a dualistic nature. It represents the darkness and the light. It represents the day and the night. It's that in-between time. It's also the dawning of something new. It's something new coming into our world. It could be a new hope coming into our world. And I remember one time in a certain, one of our ceremonies that we had here in San Marcos, one of my um, friends talking about how Akabal always gives us hope. Because Akabal is about the new day dawning. It's about the light coming back to the world. And sometimes we get that hope just when things are at their darkest, right? It's always darkest before the dawn. And so Akabal can represent that. Now, the number two can also represent duality. So we've got duality and duality together. And two Akabal can kind of like resolve as one of the um, most bipolar of the days. We can see extreme light. We can see extreme darkness. It's bridging the two. And it's bringing in something new. It's a new concept, a new conception. It's about bringing new life into the world, bringing a new concept in, helping to bridge the light into the darkness, helping to bring that new day into being. From two Akabal, we're going into three cat. Well, the number three representing the home place, so representing the time to be in one place, be in your home, be in your body, look within. That's where the strength lies on three days. It's about going on the inner path. And what you may find is that the outer path is obstructed. And the cat, the Noel of cat, well, cat can represent restrictions. It can represent certainly restricting yourself to your home. Obviously a theme right now. But it can also represent the abundance. Because cat is planting that seed into the ground. It's planting a new seed. It's like, a new, uh, it's like planting that new concept into the fertile ground that's going to grow it. Okay? So, this is saying, look within to see what you're holding on to. To see what you're planting. To see what you want to grow. And also to see what you want to let go of. Because cat is a great day for going through your net, letting go of what you no longer need to carry, to lighten the load. So what are you carrying within you that you no longer need to carry? What can you release what right now? What can you let go of so that you can move forward without a burden? It's all about looking within. So in the last couple of weeks we might have been sorting through, let's say, our attic as it were, our outer bag, our kind of like our bag that we carry with us. Free Cat is asking us to go inside to look through what we carry maybe the values that we carry, the ideas that we carry, the assumptions that we carry that are stopping us from being able to fulfill, that are stopping us to be able to take a new breath, to adapt to the changes which are upon us right now. From three cat, we're going to go into four can. Now can being the Nawal of power and wisdom and four being the Nawal of the physical plane, of the material. Okay, so there could be no less common sense day perhaps than four can. Four can is about taking your wisdom and applying it to the material world. It's about taking your power and applying it in the physical plane. So however we're working with this adaption to these changes, to this new breath that comes in, Four can brings us the wisdom of how to apply that into the real world situations. Where does our wisdom come from? Where does it sit? How we can use it? From four can, we're then going to go into five kame. So kame meaning death. Kame also representing the facing of our fears in order to transform ourselves and our world. Okay. So ik brings this kind of like transformational edge to it. It's change, it's movement, it's, it's like it's the new breath of life. And here, perhaps what we're letting go of with cat, what, we're, what common sense is coming in here. Well, ik is facing our, uh, sorry, cat a is about facing our fears in order to transform, in order to bring something new in. And here we have it connected with the number five, the number of work 
which suggests that it doesn't always drop into our lap, that it's not necessarily easy, that we may have to put some effort into facing our fears. Hopefully, we have set our framework, our wisdom, our common sense in 4K, so that when 5 Kame comes around to test us, you know, Kame brings us the strength to face that which we fear so that we can transform. When we combine it with the 5, it's suggesting that we're going to need to put some effort into it. That maybe it's not the easiest thing to face. Because when we face our fears, it never is, right? We're going to look at it and say, right, okay, this is time. There's no way around it now. Thankfully, we've set ourselves up here. We've created our foundation. Now it's time to face it head on and put our energy into it. From 5 Kame, we go into 6 Kech. So 6 Kech. Kech being the strength of the wilderness, the strength of nature. Kech being the spiritual leader. Kech being determination and understanding the fine line between stubbornness and determination. And here we see it with the number six. Well, the number six being this physical plane with the attachment above and below. Six Kech should be one of the strong and stable Nawalis. It invites us to go and connect with nature, to connect with the natural world, connect with perhaps our own nature, connect with the wilderness and bring that strength in, to use that strength to act as a leader within our communities. It calls on us to go to the mountain, if we can. And here, with this six, this is about drawing on the divine planes, the upper, the upper and lower planes, the divine masculine and divine feminine, bringing them together and distributing them around into this plane into the material plane, the physical plane. So this is all about being strong for each other, looking after each other, using the, perhaps the wisdom or the understanding that we gain from the natural world, that we see, you know, the wisdom that we gain from animals, from the environment around us, and using it to understand how to navigate in this plane of existence, how to bring that connection to the divine masculine, divine feminine, the heart of the sky and the heart of the earth into this plane right here in order to bring strength. From there we then move into the midpoint of this Trasena with seven Anil. Anil representing, ripening representing a golden light which starts to appear and seven representing the end representing well sometimes it can represent death as well but here is the midpoint of the tracena we see the end of the ripening process and perhaps this could be an interesting turning point where we understand how that maturity how we're you know this is like if we see Anil as reaching the point where we're ready to harvest. This is the end of the ripening. This is the kind of like taking it to its peak from where we're going to start take and we're going to start harvesting it. So maybe this is the peak of something. Maybe this is kind of like where we start to see a different thing coming in because quite honestly usually Anil days are said to be pretty joyful you know it's like when you get to your harvest point when you're ready you put in all of that work well here we see the final ripening from seven Anil we then go into eight Toch Toch being service we're now finishing up right today on this day 13 in Mosh we are finishing up the Toch Tresena, and here we see eight Toch coming around. Toch being the about the fire ceremony. Toch being about giving back. Toch being about being of service to others. And eight representing the day of ceremony, the day of wholeness. And so this is about giving to others very freely. Giving to others through service. 
this we can see the wholeness of the service, really giving everything that we can. We can also see it as eight being the ceremony day and Toch also being about the fire ceremony. And this is kind of like the ceremony of ceremonies. This is the ceremony to give thanks for all that we've received. Now Toch is also said to be what keeps us healthy. Toch can be very much the you know, world which could easily represent those who serve, those who look after people, people like nurses, people like social workers. So this would be a great day to make ceremony, to give thanks and support the nurses and the social workers, the health workers in our community. From 8 Toch, we then move into 9Z. 9Z, Z representing faith, representing justice, representing law. And the number 9 representing life. So this is about having faith in life, having faith that life will prevail. I said that Ik is all about the breath of life. It's about bringing new inspiration. It's about breathing a new breath that comes into the world, a fresh breath of life. Well, here with 9C, we see that. We see our faith in life, the faith that life will prevail. But Z also brings up some tests of that faith, some tests of our loyalty, perhaps our loyalty to ourselves, our family, perhaps our loyalty to life itself. Now, the number nine is also connected with the feminine, it's connected with the women. So this is perhaps saying that as Z can be often seen as the guide, this is where we need to let the women guide us, where we might be guided by life, where we maybe need to allow our faith to guide us within life and our faith in the women around us to guide us. From 9Z we move into 10 bats. Now this is kind of an interesting one because we have bats which is the weaver about bringing stuff together, about creating and we have it with the number 10, and the number 10 is this, and I know that we can't do this right now with social distancing, right? But this is about creating within our community, helping each other to weave that which we need in our community, to bring beauty through our cooperation, to bring, you know, when we weave strands together, we create something which is stronger. And so this is creating that beauty, creating art, but also creating a strength and a bond within our community through working together. From 10 bats, we move into 11 ech. So ech, the journey, the discovery. Ech, learning about stuff, experiencing stuff. Ech, taking to the road. Well, maybe that's not going to happen right now. But the 11. It's kind of all over the place. This could represent looking for experiences or drawing on experiences that come from many different directions, from all your different journeys. This can also represent going to different areas to find something, to look for something, to find an experience, to find out what we need to be working with to get the information because Ech has to know about stuff. Ech has to learn about stuff. So it's a, the, the, the opportunity to learn about a multitude of different things that comes in from the 11 Ech day and turn those experiences into new life, to bring them, to use, to adapt to the changes that one Ech brings. From 11 Ech, we're then going into 12, Ach, Ach, the father figure, Ach, the spinal column, Ach, the one that brings harmony into the home, harmony into the community. And how is Ach doing that? In this case, it's doing it with the number 12, which represents the bundling of all of life's experiences together. So perhaps this is about bundling all of your life experiences together 
to bring harmony to your community, to bring harmony to your home. And here we see um, like so many different experiences coming from so many different directions. Maybe this is something where you're remembering your different journeys on that day in order to bring stability on this day. So here we do start to see the stability. In fact, it's almost the ultimate day of stability in that way. Because Ach is really a leader within the home. Ach is really a leader within the community. He's making sure that everything and everyone is looked after. And here, when we see it combined with the number 12, this is like really pulling out all the stops, going way back into your memory to understand everything that you've learned which you can use to bring harmony to your community, which you can use to bring harmony to your home. And then finally, we finish the Trisena on 13 Ish. Now 13 Ish is really a rather, well, a magical day, I suppose would be the best way of looking at it. Ish, the Jaguar. Ish, the mothering energy. Ish, the connection with the spirit of Mother Earth herself. Ish, the connection with the sacred spaces. And here we see it connected with the number 13, the number of the spirit world, the number of the ancestors. And so this Ik Trasena that starts off with a new breath ends up right here in one of kind of what we could see as one of the most sacred days of all. The day of rediscovering our connection to the earth, reconnecting, reconnecting to the earth through our connection with the ancestors, through the sacred sites. Reconnecting with Mother Earth through connecting with our own spirit, connecting with the spirit world. So it's a very, very powerful day, is 13 ish. It's certainly a day where we might kind of like want to call on spirit, call on our ancestors to ask for Mother Earth to help to provide for us. And so this has been the Trasena of Eek. And the day after 13 ish will take us to the Trasena of Tzikin, which I will present to you in 13 days time and the Trasena of Tzikin bringing in a new vision. So we've got a couple of weeks of this eek, a couple of weeks of uncertainty, a couple of weeks of turbulence to navigate before that new vision arrives. So thanks for listening to me. Thanks for watching this. And I'll make you another video in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you.